And I do realize like it's generational curses. And honestly, people are just human. They can only do the best with what they know. You got to deal with people with grace. Welcome to PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks. I welcome on my special guest in this, my Westward Bound, a journey through the political, technological and gaming landscape of the West Coast. My special guest again, a singer, a songwriter, an author, a man of God coming out of South, South Sacramento, California, Mr. Cameron Parker himself. Welcome on the show, brother. Thank you. Thank you, man. I'm happy to be here. Happy Friday. And uh, man, it's, it's, it feels good to be sitting with you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it is Friday. Whenever y'all listening to it, it's a rainy Friday here in Georgia, too. It's raining over here in California. They say it never rains, but it, it definitely did. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all been getting a lot of rain in California. Yeah, absolutely. What are they calling the the uh the cloud lakes or whatever they call? They be dumping on the rain on you oh, all. Man, what is the uh oh what is it called? It's um the atmospheric storm or something like that. Atmospheric yeah. or something like that. It's it's ridiculous. It'll be like partly cloudy, and then like twenty minutes later, it will be just dumping water like a like the shower and then like an hour later it'll be partly cloudy again like i've never i haven't seen nothing like that in my time and i've lived in california my whole life so it's crazy yeah you got hurricanes coming there now too i mean what, what kind of atrocities y'all committing over there got god pissed <laughs> off <laughs> hey man i believe in climate change at this point i'm like man look it's cold in like every month now. It rains yeah. every all week. I'm like, it wasn't like that like 10 years ago. It wasn't raining every single day for two weeks. Like, I don't know. So Yeah, when I saw the hurricane coming through, I was like, what in the hell? I'm not to say that no parts of the country can get a hurricane, but I was like, I don't think I've ever seen a hurricane head towards California like that. Same, same. I don't know. At, at this point, people would be like, oh, you can't beat the weather. I'm like, the weather will beat you. So, yes. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So tell our listeners a little bit about who you are. Man, I'm a I'm a I'm a layered uh I'm a layered human being. I am an artist, like you said, I'm an author, um, a creative is the best way to put that. Um, man of God, you know, um an educator, um, you know, just someone who feels I feel like I'm I'm just dedicated to putting whatever I can into the world that's gonna leave it better than I found it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like that's that's really the the biggest thing, man, I've dedicated my life to a few things and, you know, family, man, all those things. So, um, you know, that's that's who I am. Different sides of me are kind of watered at different times. But mm -hmm. overall, you know, that's what I would say. So why take on so many roles? I mean, because you're taking on a lot on top of working in uh, education, too. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if, if if God puts it in you to to be able to do a bunch of things, you mm -hmm. know, I feel like. That's what we have to do. I feel like I've I've always been able to multitask and kind of keep multiple plates spinning at the same time. And so I feel like if you can do that and 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 there are a lot of things that we are that we're not doing all at one time, you know, like I'm mm -hmm. not. It's very difficult. I had to I had to come to the realization, you know, last December where it's really difficult to write an album and, and put an album together and write a book at the same time. It's two different parts of your brain. And I was trying to do both. And I just felt like I wasn't doing both at a high level. So I had mm -hmm. to stop making music for like a month to really work on, you know, the next book that I'm putting together. And then I'm like, all right, I was like, okay, February comes, I'm gonna get back to recording some stuff and, and, and pause. Cause the book's going to be, I had to finish writing it to get it off my brain. So, you know, I just feel like whatever is put in you to do, whether that's create, teach, you know, develop, invent, whatever, you know, if if you can do it, I have this motto, like the only gift we could really give back to God is just to leave, leave everything here that mm -hmm. he put in us, you know, so it's kind of like the leave empty mentality. So I don't intentionally try to have all the, the hats, but I'm like, if I could do it, let's do it, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing, too, I try to tell a lot of people. I mean, uh, we all been saying it. I mean, hell, we've said it during the pandemic, too. It's like people say, well, I want to start doing this. I want to be this content creator or I want to start teaching this class. I want to develop this class. I want to write this book. And I'm like, the, the easiest thing that you can do is just get started on it. Right. Like, yeah. That's the easiest thing you can do. <laughs> yeah. The easiest thing to do is get started. And then the hardest thing is to to stay consistent. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, but it, I, one of my one of my coworkers used to say, when you when you set your mind on something, um, the universe conspires to make a way for you. Mm -hmm. You know, like I that I took that to heart where I was just like, man, like 
that makes sense. Like if, if you decide like, OK, I'm going to go to school and it's not going to be easy the whole way, but you'll mm-hmm. see things fall into place where it's like you meet somebody that has a connection over here that can help you get to school. And then you meet somebody that has a plug on books and you're just, it's like, but when you decided is when all those things became available, you know, so. And you know what helps with that? And, you know, we're just having a conversation, too, is yeah. it's when you release the things of the past that kind of helps towards that push and that manifestation of what you're really trying to go towards. Right. Absolutely. But I've noticed that a lot lately, especially coming into 2024. It's like, especially for me personally, like I wanted to like just dump off all the excess baggage I had from 2023 and stuff in the past. I didn't even know I had on me. So I went right. through this like whole cleanse. Even at the top of the year, I did this whole, um, this fast, like this 30 day fast, this, a Daniel mm-hmm. fast on top of it too. So you sound like a Christian man. man. So I did, I did a modified Daniel fast for 30 days. And my whole purpose of that fast was to come out of it to manifest the things that I was looking for in my life that I haven't, that I thought I was going to get last year that I didn't get. And man, right. I tell you what, the minute I came out of that, everything is, things just start falling in place. When I had issues with work, now most recently too, I was worried about losing my job because in the tech industry, everybody getting laid off left and right. And I'm like, man, I'm, I got two kids in college. I'm like, I got my wife here. She works in the uh, music, the movie industry. So I'm like, I, you know, I can't be, <laughs> we can't take no loss of income right now. Right, right. And all that got worked out. Like I got moved to a different department. I'm working on a totally different project. So I ain't got to deal with the people out there was giving me a headache in my regular job. So I say all that to say is, if you go into something and you're trying to have some hope and faith into it, you yeah. got to also release all the stuff that you had before so you can open yourself up to new wine skin. Ab- put it like that. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Yeah, I, I definitely I committed to a fast at the beginning of the year, too, for the month of January. Just, um, you know, like I did some uh, morning fast and then some some sundown fast. And then I, I like to fast from, um, you know, things that are like that you may get like like there might there might be something little right like I realized like what I started in January amongst other things that I was fasting from was um using my phone when I was doing my morning routine Mm -hmm. like you know sometimes you'll go in the bathroom and you'll have your phone you might put it like on the thing and then have like a video plan or you know or sometimes like I notice people are brushing their teeth now while they're like scrolling on their phones and I'm like okay (laughs) Right. But I was just like, look, like I caught myself doing it one morning, like I was brushing my teeth and then I was like watching this little clip on, you know, some interview or whatever. And Mm -hmm. I was like, man, let me just put my phone down while I'm getting ready in the morning. Let me be like present at the sink. Get ready. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't take all morning. So let me do. So I was like, that was my new thing. Like, uh, I'm not bringing my phone in here. This is going to be like something I do for 30 days, you know, to just be present in the morning and not put any words or or sounds in my spirit before I'm ready to exit the bathroom and enter the world, you know? So little things like that is like, I feel like it's important because you kind of have to like, mm-hmm. sometimes you got to shock your system. Sometimes you got to recalibrate and sometimes you just got to like break a habit. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, <laughs> that Daniel fast, I haven't done that yet. I'm, I'm a little scared of that one. Come on. <laughs> you oh, so so here was my modified. So I I used to do like a, the original original Daniel fast. So those that don't know about a Daniel fast, it's like you got to give up all things natural. The only thing you eating is like whole whole grains, fruits and berries. You can't have no processed food like no cheeses, no coffee, no alcohol, and it's just water and stuff. So you got to and no eggs either. So you got to eat all that for like thirty days. So I used to do that. Now this I'm around because I'm a little older. I know I need protein in my life. And, it, and, and, I, and the, the nuts alone weren't enough protein. So I started, eat, I would eat boiled eggs in the morning. Yeah. And then I would still have like coffee and stuff too. So I, my commitment was, okay, I'm still going to eat, you know, everything else clean. Like I'm still going to have my, my fruits and vegetables and nuts and stuff. Right. No processed foods, any of those things. So I'm not eating no bread, but I'm like, I'm, I'm going to eat boiled eggs to have my, some protein because I'm working out. And I noticed it when I was working out, starting to Daniel fast, which was crazy because I don't know why I did that. I almost blacked out. Man, yes. Because yes. like your body is starving. And like I'm one yeah. of those people to where I don't like to go light. I'm, I'm one of those, especially one of those men, I do not like to go light. So I do it like I run. And then when I get done running, I try to run for like, walk and run for like 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And then when I get done with it, I start doing like weight training. No matter, I don't care if it's lower leg day or whatever. I'm doing all that. And then I may do some Pilates. So you try doing all that on a Daniel fast. Daniel fast. Yeah, that's what your I'm body is like. Hey, um, I'm sorry. What are you doing? Right. We need exactly. to just, you need to go to sleep for a little bit to recover from this. Right. Right. That's what that's what I'm saying. Like, go ahead and do it, brother. 
You got to if I do it, I got to plan for it. Like I got to be like, okay, what am I going to eat on these days? Because I because the thing is, like for me, the eggs would be the biggest thing. Because like I, that's how I get my protein. Because I wasn't a big protein person until maybe like a year and a half ago, and then I was like, all right, the eggs are my protein, and then I started doing the nuts, the walnuts, the almonds, and all that stuff. So. Mm-hmm. If I do it, I got to plan it. I can't just be like, all right, next week we start the Daniel Vest. I got to be like, all right, let's no. go. To- let's yeah, go you got to get your mind ready for that. Because that first yeah. week is like a detox. And it's like yeah, your exactly. body is going through. So it's like, what are you doing? It's going through a serious state of shock. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. I've heard about it. There's a few fads that I've heard of. And that one, I'm like, all right. if we we One day, well, I'll, I'll look into it this year. That might be something to look into this year for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it helped out a lot. So, I mean, even getting on that. So, like what is your, like you talking about getting your mind ready in the morning? What is your morning routine like? Because I know for me, because I'm just going to end up being a, a positive podcast interview. It, it's so, because I noticed that like when I wake up in the mornings, like I like to feed good stuff into my head. So I, I wake up even when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm listening to like positive stuff and or like meditation music. And then once I get done, like brush my teeth and get dressed in the morning, I sit and I meditate for like 15, 20 minutes. Right. So and and I've noticed doing that, it sets the tone of the day to where. Things that in the past that used to call happen and give me a headache and stuff, it stopped happening. Not to yeah. say my days are all perfect. I mean, I see. I mean, I you know, I, see, I got issues going on today. People piss me off, but uh, <laughs> it's not. But it's not. It's not first thing in the morning. So right. I, I think for me, that's how I like to start my day off in a moment of peace and like clarity. And then I can sit down and even when I'm doing all that, I get done. I try to come downstairs in my office and like journal for a little bit before I even like really get started on my work day. Even I don't care if it's working my personal business. Or working on like work work. So what is it like for you, especially being an artist on top of it? Well, you're a bit creative. So, I mean, all the stuff you're doing, you're creative. Yeah. So I, I think for me, the, the the main rule I have for myself is no social media before 10 a.m. Like that's that's my thing. Like if if it's if it can't wait till after 10 a.m., it has to be like a big deal. Like I got a tour that's happening and I got to post something at a certain time. Mm-hmm. That's like a rare exception, but no social media, Facebook, Instagram. I don't really use TikTok, but none of the none of that stuff before 10 a.m. Like that, that I can't do it because my I've learned with myself, my spirit is most open in the morning. Mm-hmm. So when I wake up, um, you know, I have an app on my phone that that gives me a morning, uh, you know, Bible quote, you know, a scripture from the Bible. Mm-hmm. Uh I try to wake up and make sure that I don't put anything because, you know, I, I I can my spirit is most open and, and my mood can shift really easily as a creative. And so I try to make sure that I'm protective of that. If I'm driving to work or mm-hmm. if I'm home, like there are things I won't watch early in the morning. If I'm trying to watch a TV show, if it's a, you know, dramatic or, a, you know, you know, sometimes you watch a show and, and the 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 premise is like pain or yeah. sadness or struggle or whatever. And I try to keep a lot of that stuff from, I try to keep from processing that stuff in the morning. We're talking like, let's just say seven 30 to 10 o'clock, because I feel like life is going to bring you things, but that's, that's one thing that's external coming to you. Right. We're putting them in ourselves. It's like feeding ourselves. So that's going to have an immediate impact on us because we're controlling that coming in. So I just try to make sure that, you know, when I get up, you know, I don't put anything, I, you know, do my morning routine, you know, make sure that, you know, the, the basic stuff, cleaning your face and brushing your teeth and doing all that stuff. But I give myself time to be quiet. Like I, I used to play music in the morning. I used to do that, but I have enough of that in my life and, you know, different sources of media that I'm creating or consuming. So I try to have a block of time at least until like nine before I like stimulate myself, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so after that, that's, you know, whatever, driving to work, play my music or sort my thoughts out. And one thing that I try to do is I try to say things out loud. Like when I'm by myself, I'm in my car, like I want to be intentional about things. So I say Mm -hmm. things out loud. I'll, you know, I'll recap things out loud of like what I need to do, what I want to do, you know, what's important to focus on. I'll say things out loud. Um, and then, you know, once the day gets started, that's different. I'll get into my office or, you know, I'll sit down in my space. I'll turn on music and do different things like that. Mm-hmm. But I was talking to a friend of mine, like going to bed, what we put into our minds and hearts before we go to sleep. And then what we put in first thing in the morning, even when I'm on vacation, it's like if I'm on vacation, even out of town. I'm not I'm not on Instagram. Somebody's trying to reach me on Instagram. Like, 
you know, I'm not on there before 10 o'clock. I'm not on Facebook and my family, you know, they'll they'll comment something or whatever. It's like, did you see what I sent you on Facebook? I'm like, yeah, but I'm not opening it yet. I saw the <laughs> notification, but I'm not opening it yet. So it's just, you know, it's not a perfect science, but it's just mm-hmm. I try to protect my spirit in the morning. That's what I try to do, because I feel like you got to gradually wake up. And that's what I try to I try to set the tone for the day, just like you. And one of the things I do is like, this is all I'm allowing in right now. And then we'll go out and, you know, do what we need to do. Yeah, I'm a little guilty sometimes. I, I, I try to sneak in some news and it's horrible, too, because I watch the most terrible of terrible news first thing in the morning. Well, even when I get done meditating, I'm like, and I'm probably should be like you and like hold off until at least 10 o'clock because, yeah, that'll, that'll get into your spirit and start having you more upset. Yeah, that's, I mean, I I was in that space, man. Like, you you know, you roll over, you get your phone. And and, and the, the crazy thing about our phones now is that you don't have to, like, they pull you to them. Like, it yep. used to be, I remember a time where your phone, like, you picked it up and then you did what you wanted to do on your phone. Now it's like, I remember I had a realization one day. I'm like, man, I've gotten 10 notifications in the last two hours on my phone. And none of it was from people. Like none of yeah. it was like people texting me, calling me or anything. It was like Google News telling me that this happened or ESPN telling me that this is going on or mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And or like I remember when Instagram started doing the, you know, like when a person went live, like you get a notification. If you didn't turn it off, you'll get a notification that the person's going live. And it's like, I don't even talk to that person. Why are you telling me that they're going live? Right. It's like I had to go turn those notifications off. Like, and so that's what I realized. Like I just try to keep it, keep the communication and all that stuff, like until I'm ready to get into it. So, you know, that's, and I've, I've had those situations where, you know, you'll look at something early in the morning and you're like, damn, like this happened last night in Wisconsin. And then you're just reflecting on it and you're, you know, little stuff. So-and-so got cut from this NBA team and you're like, what? Not that guy. Like I love that player. And it's just yeah. like, you're, you're already feeling something before you really even put your shoes on. So I try to maneuver that because sometimes you can carry that out you know what i'm saying through the through the day yeah especially if you like empathetic to stuff that's going on like a lot it was really been on my spirit lately is like what's the genocide is taking, taking place around the world mm-hmm. and i'm just like man the privileges that we take for granted over here and knowing that you know yeah. you got access to running water food go to the grocery store and you know people are starving across yeah it's Stuff like that is what I wake up to and I listen to and I hear see when I did not then stupid me go down to the comment section, which I don't advise anybody. <laughs> I don't advise Man. anybody to do. Stay stopped, away yeah. from the comment section. Oh, I had to stop. I had to stop. I was I was just like it. You know, even even when it's something this and the crazy thing is, even when it's something good, yeah, the comments are like like and you just are reminded of how much people just just are negative like it'll literally be somebody like man you'll see a video of somebody giving an incredible performance and like it'll be an artist giving an incredible performance and they'll be like why she wear those shoes though it's like what do we like what when, why like what does that have to do the shoes don't even look bad they're just like wow not her wearing these shoes with that dress it's like what what like so i just i just can't like i just be like all right i see especially when i see the comments and it's like 2,000 comments at the bottom. I'm like, no, I'm not reading not, not a one. Like, I can't imagine. I it's a habit. I, to speak on what you just said, so on my Instagram, like me and my wife, we, we thinking about having a kid because I got two kids from my previous marriage, but we thinking about having a kid. But, you know, I just like looking at children. Love, I love babies. So in my feed, because she was telling me something sometime, I got the, like the black baby feed or cute baby moments and whatever. So they had one. I had seen it like a year ago, but it popped up in my feed again. This is little young three-year-old, little young black boy. And he's climbing up the stairs to get into the house, the front doorsteps. And the mom is like, you know, come on up the stairs. And he, he, he just didn't want to do it. And he right. was like, can you pick me up? And she was like, but you are, you're big enough to walk. He's on three though. She's like, you're big enough to walk up the stairs. And he looked down, he looked up. He was like, just, he said, please. Mm-hmm. She was like, you know, even, see, even you was like, oh man. So she would, she right. would reach down and pick him up. So in the comment section, and I was like, this can't be a troll. I thought it would, cause normally I don't respond to trolls. Like if I go to your account, you got zero posts. I was like, okay, you're a troll. Right. This brother, I went to this conversation. This brother was like, see, that's the problem now. Y'all not, y'all teaching these boys to be so soft and y'all give them anything. And they end up being broken men and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, he can't be, I said, he gotta be a troll. <laughs> this man is a full fledged, he, I don't, I, he, he does something in the community. And I was like, it's a whole account, this brother on here. And I was like, this is a three-year-old child. So I went off. I was right. like, this is a three-year-old child. 
Because it kind of hits home for me. And I guess I probably shouldn't have did that because after my interview, during my interview yesterday, there was other guy, I was talking about some of my past and how I lost one of my kids. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I lost my son at, when, at he was uh, five months old, four or five months old. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of, I guess it was still sitting in my spirit. So when I saw that, I was like, man, I was like, you need to, I said, the only thing a three-year-old need to worry about doing is being loved. I was like, you okay. can't worry about teaching kids before they hit the age of nine about discipline and everything else. But I said, a three-year-old? I said, the only thing a three-year-old need to know about is how much you love him or her. Exactly. And I said, I'm speaking to that from existence, from losing my Because if I had anything I wish I could go back and do is to spend more time with my children, especially the one that, I, that passed away. And I'm just right. like, so you sitting here telling this, <laughs> telling these people that this man need to learn about being, this child need to learn about being a man. I was like, he is a child. Right, man. Listen, telling you, I've I seen so much. I've been in situations. I get in the comments. I see somebody saying something, or even on Facebook, they'll post uh-huh. something in it, whatever, and I'll be right there, just and I'll be like, mm, let me just delete it, because yeah. like, I'm like, because what, what I realized. Okay, so this is this is my experience with people, and and why I like stop going in the comments, and like I've never even told this story like publicly, like on any sort of like broadcast or recorded thing. Mm-hmm. I had a show that I did years ago, probably like 10 years ago Mm -hmm. uh, with Miguel and Lupe Fiasco. I opened the show. Oh, that's oh nice. And so like, I was the open and it was like one of my biggest moments. Like this was 10 years ago. So I was like, okay, like I made it. Like I'm going to open from, and this was like 10 years ago, Miguel, this was, this was a, what sure thing, Miguel. Like this Mm -hmm. was like Lupe Fiasco a couple of years off a kick push. Like this was like the guys. And so I'm sitting there, and like I, I, I auditioned for the show. I get it. I win it. Like I'm opening for the show. And so on the Facebook page for the for the show, uh-huh. they're promoting the show. And the, it was like an event page. They're promoting it. They're posting singles from Miguel and singles from Lupe Fiasco. And they posted a single from me. And it was a music video that I had just dropped. And then I guess there were people on the page that were like, you know, that wanted other people that had auditioned to win that spot. Uh huh. So when they saw me and they were like, you know, following the page, they were like, who's this guy? He's trash. And so I'm looking at the, cause I'm thinking <laughs> this is the first time I've ever experienced this. I'm thinking uh-huh. like they my song, like I'm excited. I'm coming in fresh and green. Like I just, I'm happy to be here. And they're like, he sucks. Like, why would you even write that lyric? Like, they're breaking my song down. They're like, look at the girl he chose for the video and blah, 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 blah all of that stuff. And so then I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm looking at this. I'm going to the page every day and it's a new comment or another person is commenting on the comment. Like, they're really going in to the point where, like, they had to delete my the post off the page because of all of the comments that were being made by the people who either lost or didn't get picked from the audition. And then like, there was this one dude's girlfriend that had, he was, it was a band that had audition and they didn't get it. And so his girlfriend, anytime they posted anything about me, she went on that page and went crazy. Like she was just like, he's trash and da 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 And y'all got more talent that y'all don't really want to record. Like it was crazy. Then fast forward mm-hmm. like five or six years, um, I do a show out here in the Bay Area and the girl ended up going to college out here in the Bay Area. I do a show out here in the Bay Area. She comes to my show and I because, you know, when you see certain people online like you, some if they look notice like you recognize them. This Mm -hmm. is Facebook. This isn't like Instagram where she got like one picture or whatever. This is Facebook. So I'm going to this girl's Facebook 10 years ago and I'm like, I see this girl talking mess to me for days. Mm -hmm. And so. I see her at a show. She doesn't remember that I'm the artist from that post like 10 years ago. This is five, six years later. Mm-hmm. And she's like, love your music. Oh my gosh. Like, da 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 da. And we were at the venue and she comes up to, can I take a picture with you? Did it? And I, you know, it, if I wasn't a godly man, I oh, I would have been petty. <laughs> I would have been petty. I'm telling you, that the Lord got to be in my spirit because I, <laughs> I wanted to so bad. And she didn't remember me. And it was funny because. She followed me on Instagram and I am a little bit petty. I'm a little bit petty. So I posted something from the show, like the flyer from the show. Uh And I I saw, you know, you can see on your on your story, like who sees your story. And I posted it and I know she saw it. And I know she's like, (laughs) oh, oh, damn. Like, this is the guy, the same guy. 
And so I was just like, okay, like, yeah, like you saw that, but that's why I don't read the comments anymore. Cause I'm like, man, I was literally like at work reading these comments for the show that was coming up. And when I walked to the, when I walked in the venue, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was like, man, is the people going to be waiting here to boo me? Like, you know, what's going to, like, I was all in my head about it and everything. So I was just like, you know what? I don't, I, it's hard. I know, like, I'm not a celebrity, but like when I see when celebrities do stuff, and the whatever people say in the comment, you're not a celebrity. I'm not. A, I'm. I'm a. I'm a notable person in certain circles. <laughs> That's what I say. But but when I see the comment section, I'm like, I can't because people don't. They don't even. It's like I feel like because the people can say anything online now. Yeah. They, anything online. They like, cheap awards, man. Yeah, and so like a grown man speaking on a three year old on on online. That's a snapshot of of America now. Like it's yeah. like. Even if you feel that way, like, why you got to post that on that moment? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because it was something positive. Exactly. Just live your life. You don't have, no one has to know that you yeah. don't pick up a three-year-old. That's your business. It's not your three-year-old. That's how I, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I delete a lot of stuff that I'm typing. I, I get to the typing part, and I'm just like, let me let me delete this. because Yeah, you know. I do that sometimes. It, it, certain things I, I get irked on, and that was one of them. Because, like I said, it's... <laughs> It's the emotional attachment. And again, I just had an interview. And I was like, no, oh, man. I was like, you know, let babies be babies. Thank you. I'm like, that's the problem we got nowadays. Like, you know, just let, let leave people alone. Especially, Especially if it's something babies. positive. Especially black babies. Let black kids have some innocence for some time. We always taught eight, nine years old. You better get up and do something, which is you'd be like, man, like I can't just explore life and find myself. And, and that's the know. emotional trauma that we have right now. Right, because a lot of us, especially me coming from the south, like we we never could sleep in or nothing. We had to wake up in the morning. We got to get our day going. We got to start cleaning up and everything. And then right. stuff wasn't done right. I mean, we know, especially coming from black families, stuff wasn't done right. Then you get wake woken up at two and three o'clock in the morning with your behind getting beat because you got to get up and do what you supposed to have gotten done that you thought you did right. Yeah, clearly right. you didn't because your mama <laughs> found something that's wrong with right. what you did. Right. You waking up, you get you getting popped to wake up and go in there, put the rest of them dishes in the in you, where, you know, they go. Right. <laughs> like, man, damn, I could wait till seven, eight o'clock. Like, right. Dude, that's what I said. Like, I, I tell it's so funny. Like, I, I joke around my family now. I'm like, I don't think anybody should get whooped awake. <laughs> like, you should know to wake up. Uh-uh. Like, that'll make no sense. When you think about it, how traumatic is that you are in a state of sleep? And you get hit to get woken up. They that's don't do a PTSD, that man. They don't do that in jail. Like no, <laughs> that's that PTSD. Because you, right. <laughs> if you like really got to be, you know, you be flinching in somebody. Your your spouse <laughs> or your partner be touching you in the bed in the middle exactly. of the night. Exactly, carrying it around like it was wrong with you. You be like, you can't be that. Can't be all the me. I'm trying to sleep. Like right, I'm trying to sleep. You know? So I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've been there. I've been, and you know, no, no disrespect. My parents, they're incredible parents. But that's one thing with my kids. I'm like, nah, like. I'm not going to whoop them awake. I'll wake you up, but I'm not going to like whoop you awake. I think that's a, that's a generational thing that we got to let go. Like let right. whooping nobody awake. You can wake them up. And then if you want to discipline them when they awake, that's fine. But I'm not waking you up at three in the morning to do nothing. Like you, you might get in trouble when you wake up, mm-hmm. but you ain't getting in trouble in the middle of the night. Like we go to sleep. I still so. can't do it. I mean, I had a discussion with my mom recently, too, because my mom was asking about the stuff of how she was raising us. And I was like, hey, man, I said, I'm going to put it here like this. You know, it's all a generational curse. Yeah. And if you weren't taught to do something different, only thing you did was go by what you was taught. Absolutely. And I was like, so if you feel as though, because I'm a big proponent of this. I want to get in psychology before I got into IT. And I'm a big proponent of like, if you feel as though you, long as you weren't hurting anybody, if you feel as though what you did was right in certain things in life, it shouldn't matter what anybody else thinks. Yeah. It shouldn't matter what I think, especially when it comes to like parents. It shouldn't matter what I think. If I didn't abuse my kids, I'm like, cause you could have done something, which well, they they did. Cause I'm like, I'm just I just gave you an example of one. Cause that's one thing I do not do with my own kids. My kids got discipline, but they got discipline in certain times of the day. And yeah. one of those things was like very traumatic, especially like like we just said earlier, starting your day off. Like you don't mm-hmm. want to be. You know what, how you gonna start a kid's day off going to school and you yelling at them and, and popping them first thing in the morning? In the it's morning. like now the whole tone of the day is just like chaos. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I try to, I try to, I, I what I've learned in parenting is like tone is super important. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not gonna get it right all the time. Like we're no. human beings, but it's like I don't want to use a tone 
towards, especially, you know, my kids are young, they're eight and four. So it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to use a tone because we're, you know, our voice in a, when your kids are young, your voice is, is dang near like God to them. It's like, you're the leading voice in their head and then they're developing their voice. And so I try to like be mindful of my words, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. like, I try to read their emotions to say, okay, like I can tell them to do that, or I can tell them to improve in that area. And, you know, without sounding critical or like sound like putting fear in, you know, what I'm saying? like it shouldn't just be fear and respect like they should because then they won't come to me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and I know like one thing my dad did teach me, which is like a super powerful lesson is like you don't want to take your feelings out on the people that are closest to you. Like I remember one day he taught me, like, if you're having a bad day and you come home, like, you know, the family didn't do it to you. So right. we don't we don't need to be in the wake of your emotions in that way. And so I try to bring that into my household as a leader of my house. Like, I don't want to come, if I'm having a bad day, I'll be quiet before I'll be a tyrant. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be quiet. I might need some time. Everybody has bad days, but you know, I might be a little dry. It might not be my bubbly self, but I'm not going to be like, you know, get out of here and go. See. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to do that because that's still their interaction with me, even if I know I had a bad day. Like yeah. my son don't know I had a bad day and I'm not going to let him do that to me if he has a bad day. So, you know, just trying to and I, I do agree in what I'm learning so much now as I investigate like and explore the generations of my family before me, you know, because it's, it's really fractured. There's people who have multiple kids with multiple different people and mm -hmm. didn't really know this person and this person passed away young and all of these things. So I begin to investigate my family. And I do realize like it's generational curses. And honestly, people are just human. They can only do the best with what they knew at the time and where they were in life. And they grow into different people if they're blessed to still, you know, be alive and, you know, to see old age or see an opportunity to mature. So you got to deal with people with grace. Like I'll look back probably 10 years from now and be like, man, that was, that was something I was doing at that stage in my life. Like I'm able to be a better man now. So I try to give that grace to, you know, the, like my parents, you know, my uncles and aunts, my grandparents, all the people that are, you know, cause it's, it, it, it's, it was not hard. It was not easy being black in America 50 years ago. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if they're trying to maneuver the world in the way things were then, and then 20 years after that, and then 20 years after that, it's a lot. So I try to give them grace. Yeah. I, I, as long as you're able to recognize things that you've done wrong. Like I give you grace until you, <laughs> you repeat the same things. And even I'm telling you what's, what's wrong and what you're doing wrong, give you examples and you continue to move forward acting the same way. That's what I'm like, okay, you know, I got to, my grandma would say, feed people with a long candle spoon. And I'm like, I don't care if it's family. And I said, <laughs> okay, in order to protect my sanity and protect the love that's inside of me, we got to separate for a little bit. Right. To calm down. You got to protect your light, man. That's for sure. And protect your spirit. I'll make it about that. You yeah. Your I've learned that for sure. Especially like the uh, the kids and stuff, too. Because I mean, we don't even realize. I mean, even even in like my wife and anybody I come into contact with, I don't like starting anybody's day off in, in trauma at all. Yes. Because yes. I'm like, if you start people's day off in trauma, I mean, like I said, you set the stage for what potentially could happen throughout the day. And then even coming home in the evening, it's like if you had a bad day. Well, technically speaking, especially the same thing in California too. Everybody can pretty much have a bad day because everybody we got to sit in this traffic. If you if you commuting into the office, <laughs> yep. And then you got to come out of all that chaos and traffic. Yep. On top of if coworkers and pissed you off too, so it's like yep. you got to I got to have a detox period. Unless you're just one of those people where you just happy go lucky the minute you see your family. I right. wasn't like that all the time. Sometimes days were just terrible. The only thing I want to come home and do is just grab me a drink and just put my feet up for a little bit and wind my wind my day down out of my head so I can actually be present in the moment with my kids and my family. Absolutely. Yeah, man. I, I have a I have a I have a rule. I try not to start people's day off with negativity like or bad news. And I definitely don't um I don't I don't receive it from other people. Like when people will be like, you know, here's some negative feedback or something. If it's, if it's in the morning, I will like ignore you. <laughs> I'll just be like, they'll be like, Oh, I got to tell you about this thing that happened that I didn't like. I'll be like, Nope, uh, I can't mm -hmm. do it. Sorry. I don't, I do not have the, there's a, uh, there's a comedian on Instagram. I can't remember her name. It's, it's Whitney something, but, uh, but uh, she's, she kind of has like faith-based comedy, but she has these uh, series of videos and she's like, I do not have the capacity. Oh, like, light skin chick. 
Yeah, yeah. Like yeah she yeah. had a viral moment where her wig fell The wig came off, yeah. And yeah, and she just has her little series. She's like, I don't have the capacity. I started adopting that myself. Like, I'll be like, look, you know, they'd be like, man, you know what happened last night? When we was at the show. I'll be can't, I don't have the capacity right now, brother. We're going to yeah. have to talk about it another time. So, you know, but I think that comes with age and maturity. Like you just, yeah. you know, when you're young, you're just like, what's going on and what's happening and tell me what's going on. And then you realize like it's two o'clock and you feel drained because you've been dealing with this issue all mm-hmm. day and you still got responsibilities and you still got, all, I'm like, nah, I can't, I only have so much to go around. So I'm like, nah, let's, 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 let's moderate it. You know, let's, let's deal with it in moderation. We ain't avoiding anything, but there's just only so much you can let in your spirit. So I definitely feel you on that. So with all that you, the, the positive stuff we're talking about, is that what led you into writing your book? To, now, correct me if I'm wrong, is indel, indel, indelible? Yeah. That's how you say it? Okay, poems for love and life. Yeah, so uh, indelible was just, I started it during the pandemic. So I, right. I started writing it. Um, I would just, you know, every Sunday I would just, you know, sit in my living room and I wasn't going into work in the mornings on Mondays and, you know, working from home. My kids was, my son was going to uh, kindergarten online. Like, so I'm just in the house Sunday nights and I would literally just sit on my couch when everybody laid down and I would just start writing. And so I think my goal with that was it started out just kind of being something that I was writing that weren't, that was not songs. Like I was like, I write songs all the time and songs are great, but I was like, I just want to write something that's not a song. And I started writing, you know, because songs can kind of be restrictive because you're writing melodies and rhymes and lyrics and, you know, all metaphors and all that. And I was like, I just want to write, put something out that's in my heart. Like, I just want to dump stuff out that's in my heart and whatever. And I, and it started to kind of skewer towards relationships and love. And I just wanted something with love to, to be because, you know, in the pandemic, all you kept hearing about was people passing away, yep. how dangerous COVID was and we had to cancel this and cancel that and cancel that. And it's just like, people were just sad every day on the news. It was people reporting from their bedrooms telling you how bad COVID was. And there was a new COVID and COVID 2.0 and all this. And so I just wanted to put love in the world. And I think that's why it kind of was skewing, you know, more towards love. So it was like poems for love and life talking about relationships, just admiration, finding the beauty in things, finding the beauty in a person, if just reflecting on a beautiful experience, whether that involved a person or not. And so um, when I finished it, I was just like, damn, like I really have like 30 or 40 poems. Like, let's just put it out. Cause I remember being at work talking to one of my coworkers when we started coming back, you know, a couple of days a week. And um, my coworker was a writer mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah, I have this collection of poems man, and I want to put it out. But like, you know, I don't know if I can find a publisher that like will publish my book. And he was like, you can self-publish a book. And I was like, yeah, I know, but like, don't I have to go through a whole thing? He was like, no, nah, I'll send you the website. You can literally put it together, design it, whatever. And when he told me that, I was like, okay, I think this was the pur- purpose for all of this. And I literally sat for a week, edited. I went out and took pictures to that, that I put inside the book and all the photos in there are photos from around the Bay Area. And, and uh, I went on a trip to Hawaii with my family and I uh, took pictures there and put them in the book. And then once I, once I got the, the mock, like the draft, they send you a draft before you can approve it and like, you know, start hosting it on all the sites. I was like, man, I really, this really became a real thing. Like it wasn't, I didn't have a plan in the beginning. Like I'm going to write a book and I'm going to put it out and it's going to change the world. Like I was just like, let's just start down this path. And so I just wanted to put more love in the world. And I think that was, I'm happy about it, but the next book, that's a, um, that's it's a motivation and 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 self focus self improvement book mm-hmm. because I don't want to just be a poet like I want to actually be someone who wrote something and created things so I'm excited for the next one for sure. So in all that you're doing I and mean, even talking about that and like the short films that you created and the 13 albums that you put out, what is it that you love? Man, I if I have to be honest, I love. I love impacting people like mm-hmm. like in a positive way. I like and, or either challenging people to think and feel and all of those things. I think that's what I make music for. Like if I can have someone connect to a song because it speaks to something that they're going through or something they feel or it motivates them in mm-hmm. those moments. Um, the short film, same thing, like acting is something that I feel like you can convey emotions through, you know, playing characters and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
writing the the self-help book I'm writing and then the book of poems like I just feel like I want people to be impacted and 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 motivated emotionally in some way that's the that's the thing because I feel like if that's the gift because I feel like that's that's the gift that a lot of people that we that we remember had like it wasn't that you know Martin Luther King was just the smartest I just I'm bringing him up because I just watched the genius series um, with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X um, that that uh, National Geographic just uh, produced, mm-hmm. but um, very well done, by the way. And I think one of the things so it's about Malcolm and Martin and they kind of followed in parallel um, up until their assassinations. And I think what we what I realized with people like that is just that God gave them a gift to impact people. And mm-hmm. it's really just about where you channel that gift. Like Malcolm X could have been a lawyer. He could have been you know, a, an actor, he could have been Martin Luther King could have been, you know, a a salesman, you know, he could have been whatever, but it's just his gift to impact people and to make people feel something. So I think that's, that's what I have true joy in. It's like, if someone feels something, whether it's, I felt sad. And then I heard that song and, and I felt like you, you saw my sadness through that song, like, or, you know, I wanted to laugh. And so your short film made me laugh. And I, tell my friends that joke all the time, like, cause that's what art does for me. You know, when I mm-hmm. listen to a song and an album, you know, I remember where I was when my mom, when I was a kid and my mom was playing uh, the share my world album by Mary J Blige. Like to this day, when I play those songs, I, I have those connections, you know, to the album. So I'm hoping to do that with whatever I create. That's the goal. Okay. Now, where is it at with, with the albums? Like, what are you working on next and where can people find you? They can find me online, Cash Campaign. Um, you know, I'm sure when whenever you're wherever you're watching this podcast, whenever you watch it, you'll see my artist name in there. If you search that, everything will pop up, cashcampaign.com as well. Um, what I'm working on right now and what I want to release this year um is two EPs and uh like a volume one and a volume two EP. And then I want to release my book. My goal is to release um my next book on my birthday in May. So that would, that's going to be like my birthday present to myself. My goal is to, it's already done being written. Mm -hmm. Uh, My goal is to format and edit for the month of March, end of March, submit it. April, it gets ready to go. My birthday is the end of May. It'll be live in May. That's the goal. And in between there sometime, drop an EP. So that's the goal. So drop an EP in the first half of the year, second half of the year, and just keep creating and, you know, and see where I, see what happens from there. Because with the book, what I want to do is I want to do an intimate sit down interview um, where I'm I'm speaking about the book. We're talking mm-hmm. about life and it'll be a self-produced kind of, you know, like a like a little uh, a, a movie that'll go with the book when it drops. So mm-hmm. that's the goal. That's that's what I'm working on right now. But first things first, you got to have a book to shoot a documentary. You got to have <laughs> the songs done to release an album. So right. uh, we're working on that, though. We, we're probably going to work on some music today. So that'll be that we're, we're one step closer every day. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I believe. One step, one one step and one percent better every day that will get you where you're supposed to go. Amen to that. So I want to say thank you for coming on, bro. I know <laughs> the first part of it. Well, it gives people an idea of actually who you are and what's actually in your spirit when they go and check out yourself. Because I know the first part of the whole episode is, you know, it's talking about positive stuff and then trauma and, and growing up and, and overcoming that. So it's a different perspective. And I think it's a positive perspective that people can take away from it. And then inspire them to go and check out your music. Because I did listen to, listen to some of your stuff and it's pretty good. I look, watch some of your music videos, too. Thank you. Thank you. That I got I actually got a new video that's coming uh this month, probably in the next week or two. So um we got we going content is king. I'm it's so crazy because I'm just not a constant content person. I just uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, that's the first thing they'll tell you in entertainment and music now. You gotta have content every every day, every week. And I'm really a crock pot like cook person, like so we'll see. But but there's gonna be starting this month, there's gonna be some stuff coming from me and singles and videos and all that stuff. Once we, once we hit the end of March or mid March, it'll, it'll be coming. So I appreciate you checking out all of the material, man. It's my heart is always in it. I'm never just making something just to make it for sure. 
No, nah, yeah, you can tell you put some work into it. Because like I said, music is good. Like even the acting in the videos is good. Because I've seen some cheesy videos. Oh, my God. We grew up in, <laughs> during the No Limit era. And there were some cheesy videos. <laughs> hey, but, you, but you got to admit, them No Limits, man. I still play that. <laughs> when I want to ruin this, I'm like, No Limit and Cash Money for the yeah, late yeah. 2000s. It was an era. It was a. It was an era, man. <laughs> but yeah, now I do ask this before we go that you leave the community with something positive, if you can. Man, something positive. I think I'm. I think I'm pretty good at that. Um, what I'll say, my positive message is to give yourself grace. Um, a lot of times we become discouraged because you know I know personally the voice in our heads can tell us that we're not doing enough. We can't do something. We should have done something um, or we did it wrong. But I feel like if we give ourselves grace as we are journeying through things, it empowers us because it doesn't hold us back from moving forward. We can if we only take one step today, that's still one step closer than we were the day before. If you take 10 steps tomorrow and then you only take two steps the day after don't tell yourself, oh, man, I, only, I took eight less steps today than I did yesterday. Just give yourself grace and acknowledge the fact that you are making forward progress. Even if you're resting and you're taking no steps, mm-hmm. acknowledge the fact that you need rest and you will continue when you are recharged. So, you know, just give yourself grace along the journey. That's my positive message. Grace along the journey. Yeah, that's a good message. Yeah, because it's, it's not much you can do when if you're trying to operate on an empty battery. It's not, you're not going to go anywhere. Absolutely. My mom always says you can't pour from an empty cup. So you cannot. All right, man. Thank you for uh, coming on again. It's a good conversation. Y'all will uh, tune in and find this episode on pgtv.online and make sure that, you know, you like, and then you share this episode on YouTube. And whenever you listen to all podcasts from your platforms, and matter of fact, if you're checking us out on Apple music, make sure you leave a comment. Let us know how you how you feel about Mr. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Cameron Parker. I think he's a good dude. I like his music and stuff, and I'm excited about the book that he's getting ready to come out and the other music that he's getting ready to produce. So thank you again, brother. I Absolutely. appreciate you, and I'll be following up with you to see how things are going. Until next time, PTG TV, out.